So environment variables, there are so many ways to handle them and use them in your projects. For example, if you're building some Go project, you can be probably using this Viper package, which is really famous. It can do a lot of things. And there's so many other ones like this for different languages and frameworks. However, locally, I've been using this DIREMV package or tool for a long, long time. And it's just amazing. It's language agnostic. It doesn't care what language are you using or framework or whatever. It just works the same way throughout all your projects. And it isolates it. So it's per directory. Meaning that if you have three different projects, each directory will contain or will have specific environment variables for that directory. And so the website you have to go to is duremv.net and you'll be seeing this page here. So the way it works is you need to create a envrc file and then essentially load it for that directory. So before we start, how do you install this? Um, I'm on Mac, so I can just use Homebrew, I think on any Debian based um, operating system. You can use their package manager as well. There's two things. You just install it using your package manager. And the next thing is you have to hook it into your shell. And to do so, all you have to do is just add this line, eval, Durian v, hook, bash, or ZSH. And if you're using all my uh, ZSH, then you can just add it as a plugin as well. It's a port fish and some other shells. Now, once you install it, and here I have it installed on my machine already, we can test it out. So here you see, for example, if you echo this line, if it says nope, then it means that there's no really environment variable loaded in this directory. So let's let's play with it. And so I can walk you through a simple project to see if it's useful for you. So here I have a very basic, pretty much empty Go project. So one way you can actually like export or kind of work with environment variables is if you can do something like this, like foo equal bar and then go run dot. This will actually include the environment variables. So you see we can um, get the value out of it. But then that's obviously not very efficient. So most of the time you end up creating .env files here. And let's say you say foo equal bar. And when you go to main, you expect that to work, right? So like you go run dot, but then you know that you actually need to end up using a library like Viper or something similar. So I don't want to use Viper here. So I want to show you how DuryMV works. So I have it installed and let me create .envrc. So one thing about this, I think it works both with envrc and with env, but just to follow the docs, I'm just going to use envrc. And let's put here foo equal to bar. And maybe I'll remove it here just to avoid any conflicts. And if we run it now, by saying go run um, dot, you see it's still empty. So what we need to do is env allow dot. And when you say env allow dot, it essentially loads whatever environment variables you have here. So one mistake we, ha we did here is we have to actually export this. So the syntax is a bit different than normal env files. When you export it, and you can just do dirty allow dot again, you see it loaded the environment variables, and you can see here what actually it loaded. So we, in this case, we have this foo thing. So running the project again, you see it does print out the value here. Pretty cool, huh? So if you say, for example, you want to remove it, or like um, maybe deny all these things, uh, these environment variables, you can say dirty env deny. And this will essentially reverse this process. So now if you say go run dot, you see it's empty again. Let's allow them. And now we're back. So now we can read our environment variables here. Notice that we didn't have to do anything special, pull any packages. I'm just using the uh, standard library and using this one. This is very similar for whenever you use like systemd on Linux machines on servers. You just have your, you know, export your different um environment variables in your services. This is, it feels the same way. And that's why I like it so much. If we go back to our documentation here, there's a couple things are worth looking into. So just to recap, you are loading and unloading environment variables per directory. Now, one more thing you can do with this actually is pretty cool is you have this um, 
std library that it provides, which is essentially a group of functions, which is this one here, that you can use inside of your EMVRC file. It's pretty awesome, actually. There's so many things you can do here and run within your EMVRC file. So here it shows you all the different things you can actually do within that EMVRC file. And one thing I want to demo is this guy. So it says like it loads an EMV file in the current environment. So if you go back to our project, we do have an EMV file, right? Let's say I want to add like, for example, ABC is equal to whatever, ABC, and save that. So if we try to like load that by saying like ABC here, and just like change this to ABC, this probably will not work. As you can tell, it's empty. So we could actually load this EMV file from within this ENVRC, which is actually one of the cool things with this std lib. And the way you can do that is by calling one of these functions. So dot .env, and then you provide the path. So if you go back to our editor here, and I can say here, um, env path, uh, dot .env, I mean, dot .env, and you've provided the path, which would be env. Now, if we try to run it, it's still going to be empty, but you notice the message here. It says it's blocked and you need to allow it again. That's a cool thing. It's not going to force like any, um, if somebody adds a new env file, for example, or a new, ex a new like environment variable, it's not just going to load it. You have to keep allowing it, which is pretty good for security. So there env, allow, and we should be good to go. Notice we have two environment variables loaded here. Now, if you run our project, it loads both. Pretty cool. So you can have, for example, like a base EMV file like this one. And then you can have like maybe per environment specific EMV files. You can play with that. There's so many things you can do with a specific workflow. But, you know, there's a lot of files here. There's a lot of, I mean, functions that you can use. You can append to the path, for example. Yeah, so that's uh, the library. It's very simple to use. It's just a couple commands, and you can do something like dot um, their emv here. You can see all the things it can do. So a few things. Obviously, the deny is the one you're gonna use to kind of reverse all of that. You kind of remove all those environment variables. You can reload the environment variable, and you can display all the different functions in this std lib, and you can prune which essentially um, removes all allowed files. Yeah, so I just wanted to share about this tool and very simple. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.